We are in South Dakota. This is such an, an exciting hunt. An area we've been hunting for probably 20, 25 years. That is no joke. We're just coming off of four elk hunts. Our bodies are beat. Nate, the, the filmmaker, he is ready for one of those types of hunts where we're chilling. We can shower every night, sleep in a good bed. Amen. 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 Our tags are good for whitetail or mule deer and we're going to be doing it with archery gear. So we have Kurt Howard from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. We, he and I have been trying to put this together for the last uh, couple years. So we're here. Um, it's hot, sunny. Austin Eagle Elk, who helped film me last year, watch me miss my shot. Well, I'm, I'm, it's redemption. It's kind of late in the afternoon. We're going to go hook up on an ag field, and I believe the rancher has the bales still in the field. So we're going to set up some bale blinds for the white tail that's gonna feed out of the river bottom. After we get the blind set up, we're gonna to try to ease out, let them get used to that setup and not let our let them get our scent and it stink and any disturbance kind of thing. So, and then Lord willing, we'll have an hour, hour and a half this evening to go um, stock up and spot some mule deer in a, in a neighboring uh, area. So we're pretty stoked and uh, been looking forward to this hunt for a long time. I've been in the darkness for 40 days I've been Searching for holy flames A sign to light up the way So can you help me out? Can you help me out? came over and visited with the rancher. He already built uh, the bail blinds for us, so we don't have to do that this afternoon. Kind of hanging out, he's gonna show us the fields where the whitetails are, are feeding into, and he's got a couple things to do, so we're hanging, and here's a muley buck bedded down in the shadows and it's cracking the ground, and then we got about six does and fawns out here a couple 300 yards away, already on their feet and feeding. Huh? Lot of observing, did a lot of scouting, so to speak, with our glasses. Saw lots and lots of white tail and lots of bucks. Um, so that's going to give us our strategy for tomorrow afternoon when we get out there, probably early in the afternoon. We're thinking, you know, Kurt and I have talked, but we're thinking between two and three we'll be we'll be in our spots. But tomorrow morning. Um, we are headed very, very early up to the north, and uh, we're going to do some spotting and stalking for some mule deer. We're going to meet up with uh, my good friend Bert Peralt and uh, meet his neighbor, who actually will kind of point in some areas where they have seen some mule deer. We're going to get on some high points and uh, do some glassing, and Lord willing, we'll be able to find some deer and uh, see some bucks and get the wind right do some stalking and maybe get a shot, so. The master cylinder bolt broke. That's kind of different, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Have you ever seen one of them break? Well, through, through all of this catastrophe, there's light at the end of the tunnel because my good friend Bert is willing to take this rig and get the pieces and parts and put it together and get it uh, back on the road again. So we're just going to go hunting and act like this sort of like thing didn't happen. 
but uh, as my good friend Toby says, you run a Ford, Ken, so you gotta be prepared. Right now, I can't say anything different. I might have to buy Chevy next time, I don't know. I don't wanna think about it. Look, man, that's one nice thing about being good people. People wanna help you when you get in a jam. And right now, we're in jam, jelly, and syrup all at the same time. But by gosh, it's breaking day, the draw's right here, and we're gonna go see if we can't kill a meal deer. More rougher country. Yeah, sure as a world, we come up over this top, and there's four. Look like two big mule deer doe and, and two fawns. Just cut the side hill coming out of there. So we're gonna work our way to the northeast and uh, see if we can get up on some points and do some glassing. The good news is they're still on their feet. It's still pretty cool. It's, the sun as high as it is, so we're gonna, we got another half a mile to move, and then uh, we'll be looking right in down into some of those deep draws. There's way more cover, way more trees, so this is encouraging. seeing 20 white tail, 11 coyotes, no mule deer, to now 15 mule deer. Now we're just looking for a good representative buck. We haven't laid eyes on that, but that fork and horn may lead us to his big brother. It's almost straight up noon. We got another hour, hour and a half before hopefully the truck is finished. Bert's working on it. Bless his heart, man. Saving our bacon. It's going to end up being about a five mile hike we just did. And, I mean, it was good. The wind's starting to blow a little bit now, so it, it'd be troublesome for uh, Kurt or I to shoot unless we were down in the draw and kind of a little bit out of the wind if we were going to shoot over 30 yards because there'd be significant uh, wind drift to consider. But yeah, I mean, we're seeing uh, there's going to be does in this next draw. We've already saw them, but I don't know. It's. it's Definitely advantage mule deer buck right now because we come over this ridge and it'd be awfully difficult to 
see him before he sees us. is back on the back in the saddle <laughs> so now we're gonna get an afternoon hunt and probably do a, a mule deer deal and not uh, go do the white tail because we're just gonna be too late so but I think we're gonna fill our bellies first amen that sounds like a good plan I like that <laughs> Kurt Howard with the Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, and uh, we went out this morning, got into a bunch of deer, did not see anything that was uh, over 18 months old for bucks, and uh, saw a boatload of coyotes. <laughs> so we're going to try to change things up, so we're probably 30 miles south of where we were hunting this morning. Got the big rig back on the road again, thanks to Bert and his efforts. Now we got uh, an hour and a half, the sun's setting, it's still hot. It's hot now. Yeah, good. yeah, so we're hoping that uh, the deer will get on their feet. We got high hopes, we got about a half a mile walk before we get into the broken ground where we start. We think we're gonna start seeing deer. So we're gonna get busy right now. We got Austin, he's carrying two cow decoys. We're gonna throw every ninja move that we can put on it. We got the wind coming from kind of the southwest. So what do you think? Yeah. Oh, you got it. Oh. There you go. Be careful, they travel in pairs. I thought that was a buzz worm when I. <laughs> Way to go, heard man. It. I'm like, what happened? Did a deer just jump up? <laughs> nope. Hmm. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Five, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. You see any antlers? No. Oh, I thought there was one behind the bush. I guess it's just five. No, there's, no, there's seven. There's seven. There's seven. Like there's seven. Okay, it is our first full day out here in South Dakota after three weeks, two weeks of mountains and now we're chasing mule deer out here in South Dakota. You have got to do something to manage the moisture in your boots. So we're here, this is our unabashed solicitation of the day. So what we've done here is uh, we've got two products that I want to mention, both by Wildlife Research and my redneck uh, kind of mentality, I call these a scent biscuit, but it, it's way more than that. These absorb scent and absorb moisture. So what we do is we're gonna take <clears throat> their no zone air freshener, and so you're gonna give it a couple shots in your boots, just like you would if you were to put this in your tent or even in uh, um, your truck, but it, it kills scent, neutralizes scent, and then gives it a little bit of a outdoor forest smell. And then you're gonna take these tote tamers, put slide them right into both boots. And then what you do, when you get them in like that right there, then you take a bag like this, and that just kind of helps concentrate everything, what you're trying to do with these boots. Inside this, not necessarily to trap moisture, that's not it, but just just to kind of control the environment a little bit. Set that off to the side. And now in the morning, you're gonna have boots that are just about rid of the sweat, rid of the stink, and you're ready for another day. Um, we've got like four more elk hunts back to back after we do this South Dakota mule deer hunt. And I can guarantee you, 
that these boots are going to be happy, my feet's going to be happy going through this exercise right here. We had a great day, the weather was good, we had, had a nice little breeze so we could do some stalking with mule deer out in the prairie, didn't quite come together. Probably the biggest thing was we just didn't see a big enough buck that we wanted to get after. So collectively we saw just over 20 deer the first half of the day and this evening it was somewhere between 15 to 20 deer. Uh, mule deer this afternoon. Probably the largest buck we saw was going over the horizon that uh, uh, this afternoon, which it was still a, maybe a two and a half year old deer, so not what we're after. But it was a great day. We we uh, hustled around the prairie just about eight miles, uh, ran into one rattlesnake um, to his de demise. I got to see a little break dancing with the guys from uh, uh, that was behind me. I, I'm walking first, so it's 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 never the first guy that gets bit it's the number two and number three kind of like uh the bees you step on a wasp deal a yellow jacket whatever the first guy doesn't get stung it's the dudes behind so i heard a little commotion went back and i'm telling you they were doing some line dance and break dance i couldn't recognize it they looked like a, a new amazement uh, amusement ride but uh, uh at the end of the day we are having a little some snacks um We've settled settled in and um, got the rig fixed, as I mentioned earlier, and tomorrow we're going to go back where we were at this evening, bring the spotting scope, put, crank up the old power on the SIG, and uh, take a look. I think, I think the bucks are going to be on their feet, and I think that uh, we're probably going to see double the deer that we saw this evening. It just didn't cool off. It, it was in the 80s when we went out, and uh, it was still, I would say, deep in the 70s when we came in. And uh, so this, it'll probably be in the upper 40s, maybe lower 40s, deer will be on their feet. And uh, I think tomorrow morning lends itself well that we're going to see deer and we're going to see that next level of bucks. That, that's kind of our hope. And uh, with that being said, we're, we're looking to fill the old grizzly cooler and uh, with any hopes that will happen tomorrow morning.